Hi guys. Today I've got Danielle Ditburner with me because she is a beautiful woman that is out there and making this world a little bit of a better place, one project at a time. And as such, she decided to come on board to be a co-author in our beautiful book, Depression Light to Me. Danielle, welcome to my show. Thank you so much, Stefan, for having me today. It is a pleasure to be here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, what made you, what attracted you to become a co-author in this project? Um, actually, a few things. Um, I decided earlier this year that I was going to become an author. Um, I have many, many different aspirations to do different things in my life, but one of them was being an author. Uh, because I have many stories to tell. And I went to Austin for a writing workshop because this was a new adventure for me. And in that process, I ended up meeting several different co-authors mm -hmm. um, who, you know, divine timing, God always puts you in the right place at the right time. And... Um, one of those authors extended out the invitation because she was a co-author. Her name is Smith TV San Miguel. And I said, you know what? Um, yeah, I'd be interested because the, the book that I am writing currently um, has to do with post-traumatic growth. But the story that I share in this book was not one that I was planning on sharing in that book. And it was still a very, very raw, very important story that I knew needed to be told. And again, divine timing. I said, okay, this is the time that I get to tell that story and that I get to actually fully make peace with it and end that chapter, both figuratively and literally mm. in my life. Oh, and so that's why I decided to come on. Beautiful, beautiful. And as you say it, sometimes you have to be in the right place and the right moment for opportunities to come. Although you could, of course, argue also that many of us have their eyes closed to opportunities, even if those knock them over the head with a two by four. Um, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it is what it is, <laughs> which is beautiful. Yeah. If you were to yeah. look back into your own history with depression, what was a lie that depression told you? Uh, um. I think the biggest one was that I was not capable of taking up space. And what I mean by that is my full being, my embodying my spirit, um, that that wasn't allowed. Mm. And um, that if I were to actually do that, that I wouldn't be accepted, that I wouldn't be loved, that I wouldn't be appreciated. Mm -hmm. And so I stifled myself for a large period of my life um, to kind of be able to fit in, to be able to mm -hmm. be accepted and acknowledged by others. Mm -hmm. And I also very much negated my spirit. I always told myself that I wasn't a spiritual person that um, because I didn't live by God's word that I wasn't I wasn't loved as a spiritual being that I didn't fit into that category right. so it was unfair for me to categorize myself as a spiritual person Hmm. Um, but my entire life, you know, hindsight is beautiful, right? I've always been such a very spiritual being. And um, what I learned through depression, through my bout with that, is that my spirit is so powerful. Hmm. And whew, I'm starting to feel a little bit of emotion here um, that 
really with everything that I was doing in my life um, at that point, I was newly becoming a coach and I was all about authenticity and, you know, staying true to your values and living a really exceptional life. And I felt like a fraud. Hmm. I felt like I you know, could say a lot of things, but I I found myself not actually living up to those expectations and circumstances. And again, it was because I was devaluing myself. I was disrespecting myself. And I, I got into a situation where I was allowing another person to really take advantage and abuse me. And that is, I, I tell the depth of that story in Depression Lied to Me. But um, what I recognized is that it wasn't just the abuse that I was enduring. It was the disrespect to myself and my spirit that was the most harm. And that my spirit was worthy of being heard, was worthy of being seen of being loved and that I was the one that needed to give that to her first because if I wasn't able to do that nobody else was going to be able to beautiful absolutely beautiful if you were to think back or if you were to imagine that the person who was in the darkness, you in the darkness, if you had had a partner who was not the cause of the darkness, but was an innocent bystander, what would you tell that person? Mm, let me just clarify. What would I tell myself or that no. partner? The partner, which advice would you give a partner or, or the spouse of someone who goes through depression? Okay, yeah. Um, I would say with that, be as compassionate as you possibly can. Try to understand that person who is going through that, how lost they may be, mm. how much darkness they might be experiencing, the heaviness mm. that they are probably carrying a load that is exponentially larger than what they or anybody else can carry with them. Mm. And so to be compassionate to that and ask yourself, what kind of love would I need in that space? Mm. And what kind of love can I give to that person? Mm. What kind of light could I shed so that it gives them just a glimmer? of something that will pull them forward mm. because as partners um, we can't fix others problems we can't take responsibility for those problems it is an inside job when we are in the darkness however we do need support and love from others to understand that we are not alone that we are seen that even if we are in the undertow of those waves, that we can still submerge and that we can still keep going and that we can rise above what we are experiencing. And sometimes that, that doesn't even have to be things that are said. That can be a touch on the hand. It could be a hug. It could be a text message of mm. thinking of you. Hey, do you realize how wonderful you are? Being able to give some of those kind affirmations and being able to see that your light mm. is still shining, even though you may not see it, that others do see it. How would you describe your own version of depression to a child? Ooh, that's a great question. Great question. Hmm. 
I would describe it as being a monster or a dark abyss and not necessarily being afraid of it, but just being scared and insecure and not having that uncertainty of what is that. I'm not scared of it, but I don't know what lies ahead. Hmm. And so um, it causes you to kind of retreat and it causes you to really kind of repress. Hmm. And those aren't words necessarily hmm. that a child would understand. So hmm. um, it's, be it's beautiful because I put you in the deep end here and on purpose yeah. because it yeah. is sometimes yeah. so difficult, even for us mm -hmm. who love to use our words to describe us. We mm -hmm. are storytellers, and yet it can be so yeah. difficult to describe depression, to make the, the concept of depression understandable to someone who has not experienced it. And that is one of the hallmarks of it, isn't it? And there is, so it right. is, it's, right. it's, it's lovely to hear your words and 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 how you struggle because this is this is normal for us. And the more, but yeah. the more we can talk about it, and and hopefully this book will allow us all to maybe for a family to for a family member to buy that book, have it lying on the kitchen table around the dinner table, mm -hmm. and maybe start a discussion start yeah. a a a a way of addressing it that is maybe playful that is maybe educational that is whatever it is let's start talking about right. that chameleon of depression that can right. can turn our lives upside down and right. one of one of the biggest by, sorry i think by by talking about it by getting that out in the open that is breaking the taboo that this is something that is so dark and dreary that we can't be discussing that we can't be having yeah. conversations i mean that is one of the biggest pieces of depression that i think causes it to be so pervasive is that we have this belief due to society that Oh, if I'm experience, like experiencing the raw depression, the deep down cannot function, I can't talk about it because it's not acceptable. <laughs> Nobody else knows how to deal with it. Nobody like this is something I must weather on my own. And if we're having these conversations, then it is more of conversation like oh okay how can we work through this together I mean it would be no different than when somebody passes when somebody passes or let's say your your dog dies we experience grief and we don't just hold that in we say my spouse passed away my dog died Mm -hmm. And the person we're talking to says, oh, that is so heartbreaking. My condolences. How mm -hmm. can I help you? Mm -hmm. A neighbor might drop something off, you know, for dinner mm -hmm. one night a week. You know, like it brings you together because of the allowance that we each have to, to discuss it because we all experience grief in some way. But you know what? I think we all experience depression in mm. some way too. It might look completely different for mm. every single one of us. Mm. It might not be pervasive or it could be extremely debilitating. Mm. But if we're talking about it, it can bring itself out of the dark, you know? And, and that can alleviate so much suffering in the world. Absolutely. One last question. If you mm -hmm. think about that 
young woman trapped in the depression, i.e. you in the past, what message would you send to that person? Mm. Do not keep it all in. Do not weather this yourself. Mm. Mm. By speaking up, by sharing it, by sharing your experience and the truth, not glazing over really what's going on, but mm. actually speaking to people. Mm. That is more courageous than attempting to weather it on your own. And it is stronger mm. to speak up about it and be vulnerable mm. than it is to silence yourself and suffer in agony quietly alone. I love it. Danielle Ditburner, my gorgeous co-creator, co-author of Depression Light to Me. Guys, go out there, have a look at the book, get it, get it for yourself. Maybe there is someone you know who needs to hear these messages of hope, these beautiful stories told by women who have gone through depression and are now out there to make this world a better place, one story at a time. Danielle, thank you so much for being a guest on my show. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm so grateful to be part of this. Cool. And you guys out there, Look after yourself and live with passion. Bye. Bye.